Good morning. I'm Keith Salzman. I'm a retired Army doctor, family practice for 22 years. Um, served in Iraq and Kosovo. And um, the last seven years, I worked in um, informatics and doing information exchange with the DOD and VA from 2004. So we kind of pioneered, and the federal system is really, I think, to be commended for leading a lot of the interoperability and information exchange, um, setting the template for the country. I testified at Congress, and, and they kind of berated us for not responding to their um, demands for interoperability for the last 20 years. And they said, look, you know, it's not like we're not adopting something that's out there that somebody else is doing well. We're creating it. So um, I think you have to really uh, look at the federal sector as because there's a preponderance of funding there, there's also a responsibility, and I think they take that responsibility seriously. I do. Um, I've been at CACI for three years before moving over to IBM um, to continue to work and support the federal sector in transformation of healthcare. So that's kind of where I've been and where I've, uh, what I'd like to do is um, kind of look at where uh, the U.S. is in terms of healthcare delivery for cost um, to kind of set the stage for our transformation journey and what's driving that. Um, if you look at the, at the chart on the left, it's um, 1975 snapshot of mortality and um, the U.S.'s cost per patient. They were um, high on mortality and, and about the same for cost. Um, they've progressed to be much higher in cost and not much progression in mortality. So um, there is a, a bright spot. Let's see if I can. And Ogden, Utah shows up there as, as performing much better. What, what you see in America is, is silos of excellence. And so you have a lot of pockets of things going well, but they aren't very well integrated across the country in, in terms of performance. And so I think that that's the, um, the challenge. The motivator is everybody is paying uh, a premium for healthcare costs. All your corporations, um, your car costs 20% more because of the healthcare costs invested in it. So everybody has a motivation to start driving those costs down. Um, and we're starting to, but, but it's a long road ahead. If you look at the... Um, Waste and uh, Dr. Let's see, um, Dr. Goodrich mentioned this. Um, there's a, a URL at the bottom of the slide, and you can go look at that. The slide set's pretty interesting to follow. A three trillion dollar industry in America, about a third of it is wasted, uh, no value. So we really have to kind of look at where are those opportunities to start driving value into the system. Um, Dr. Shannon mentioned about, I think, improving his organization. There's pockets of that going on, too. Um, Dr. Toussaint last year gave a talk at, at um, ACHE about his experience at ThetaCare. He came in, and then there were probably 170 metrics that they were following. And he asked them, okay, you know, how are we doing on these? And, and they, the response was, we're, they're on the shelf. You know, we're, we're not really doing much with them. So he went in and changed their approach and drove it down to trying to do three things well. And out of that, they, they became a learning organization and they became improved in their uh, healthcare delivery. But what he looked around and saw, and, and the military had a um, review of their performance, and they, they saw that, again, in those 100 hospitals measured by a certain things, they were comparable to their peers, but it wasn't reflective of overall excellence. It was reflective of the best of the worst, kind of, if you look at the American experience. So there's, there's plenty of opportunities to improve. There's little isolated pockets of activities that are driving that. So the, the goal is to kind of bring those together, share experiences, but then make that a uniform experience across the country rather than an isolated experience. This is the S-curve. Is that something that's pretty familiar to everybody? Okay. I, I can walk through it if you need to, but this is something that kind of fascinated me about a 
predictable approach to transformation that industries go through this all the time. Um, if, you, if you want a good reference, Clay Christensen's book on the innovator's prescription really outlines this concept and outlines the state of American healthcare. Um, in another article that he wrote, he, he looked at this and said, how are we doing? And he, he said, well, you can take a logarithm of this S-curve and it'll be a straight line. So it's a predictable time measured event in any industry. Healthcare seems to be a little more challenging than that, and, and I don't know if we're on, I guess scientifically we should be on the path, but, um, but we're making progress, and that line shows uh, that we're approaching the neutral point of investment and that we'll start seeing a return on investment. We wrote a paper from the HIMSS Interoperability Committee to look at what's interoperability and information exchange doing in terms of return on investment. And all we could point to is what the intuition was. You're starting to see signs of progress on that, on that timeline. So I think according to you know, the science, that we'll get there. And I'm encouraged by all the efforts and the talent that's going into moving us there, but there's a lot of uh, Brownian motion that kind of needs to be brought together to advance everybody together. Um, you look on the bottom, it has a triple aim. The military has an added aim of readiness, which on the public sector or the, the commercial side kind of translates into um, occupational readiness or ready, work readiness, workforce readiness. So there's some, you know, that common thread between the military triple aim, quadruple aim, they call it, and then adding adding the workforce preparation to this uh, kind of sets a good uh, agenda for the country. Um, as far as uh, working with your patient populations, when I was at Madigan, what we did was took the high cost, uh, low numbers in our organization which were diabetics and tried to uh, manage their care. What you do when you do that, you get at the uh, at your cost drivers, but you're not treating your total population where they should be. So in this um, move towards uh, taking care of your population, that's naturally where you start is the sickest patients. Um, you soon identify that not just sick patients, but sick patients with multiple illnesses need to be managed. So you, you broaden your approach to taking care of your population. But then as you start getting a handle on that population, you move down that curve and get towards the people that are well, but need to start looking at their behavior and things that are gonna lead them to uh, disease states in the future if they don't change. Uh, most of the um, factors that generate disease in people are their own behaviors. And we really haven't gotten to that um, as uh, impacting that and incentivizing people to um, to take that. We, I think apps and, and monitors and things like that are, are starting to change that behavior. You know, the insurance plans give their members Fitbits and have them compete against each other for how many steps a day and things like that. So, so okay. There's the build. Um, another thing that uh, has been done for a long time, same with informatics or a lot of these disciplines, they're kind of converging on a tipping point where we can come together and really work together as disciplines to impact the health of our country. Um, that's the primary care medical home, which has been in existence for a long time, but is maturing over time. And um, Dr. Paul Grundy's at IBM uh, is kind of the godfather of this. He has a book. Uh, I didn't put it in my, no, in my references, but it's the um, family physician, or familiar physician, Peter Anderson wrote it, and I can get that reference for you if you're interested. Um, but just looking at the system of workflow for care and having it all go through the doctor really created a, a choke point and, and kind of distracted what care was being delivered to the patient. So by re 
redesigning that workflow to leverage the talents of the team and engage the patient is, has, is starting to show improvement in patient care. And a lot of these things, because they have other variables that affect them, in isolation you may not see improvement, but as you start to aggregate all the advances that are being made, they start to show uh, the science of improvement over time. Um, this is kind of how the workflow has changed uh, for the patient. Um, and so that they would get what they need rather than uh, just a FaceTime with the physician. Um, another factor involved in um, taking care of your patients is how much time do they see the physician in a year or encounter the medical system. There's a lot of white space. If they see the doctor for an hour or two hours over the course of a year, there's a lot of time when they're out there on their own and either contributing to their poorer health or or working towards better health. So there are a lot of spaces for intervention outside of the doctor's office where you have your visit. Um, Topol's book kind of gets that intuition of the patient will see you now. So um, These are kind of the factors that they've put in uh, primary care medical home, getting more to a data you always hear about, evidence-based care, um, that's it's a nice mantra but translating the evidence into actual um, action and performance is what's necessary. Um, having a plan for each patient, the patients that are healthy, um, the patients that are at risk for the disease down the road, um, and then engaging a team to support the patient in, in getting healthy. Um, and then managing a population from population health down to the individual patient in your panels. And, um, another thing we did um, at Madigan in the Army Hospital was to do performance reports that would actually give feedback. A lot of these systems, you can't get information back out of them to inform how you're doing on your patient panels. So as we gave a scorecard to the um, individual patient and then the patient's practice, or the, the physician's practice on how they're doing to their patients and populations on diabetes care and, and uh, women's health, those kind of things. Um, when they got the results, then they're motivated to compete with their peers and start improving the, the care that they deliver when it's visible. A lot of the information that goes into EHR is, is invisible to the, to the users of it. Um, these are just steps and uh, um, Dr. Goodrich kind of laid out the same thing for the HHS model of, of care from the old doctor-centered care um, to, to a patient-centered model. So these steps just walk through what, what that entails and uh, principles to take better care of our patient population. Um, another uh, just model of, of moving from the old paradigms to a new paradigm of, of team-centered care, um, better communication. If we can reach, one interesting thing I found in working with uh, in the Northwest was um, they did a, a Whatcom County has an integrated healthcare system, and the thing that they found was you know, the best way to communicate with a patient was through their cell phone because if they are homeless, a single mom, all these all these people with different demographics all had one thing in common, they had a cell phone. So you could communicate effectively that way. Um, and then moving from uh, just having an infrastructure up to value-based purchasing, the, the move to really incentivize care, and I know the gaming involved is, is a problem, but uh, from payment for fee-for-service where you're incentivized to do a lot of services and not share information, to value base where you have the opportunity to uh, benefit from one data set in managing a patient. Um, and then uh, I think you know Watson is, is a tool that IBM's bringing to, uh, to, to analytics uh, and, and cognitive computing so that you can build a context of the patient's environment. They're doing cancer care at Sloan Kettering and, and different cancer uh, delivery centers 
that are, that are using that analytics to drive more improved approach to patient care. Um, so changing our value system from fee-for-service to outcomes-based, value-based. Uh, and then these are other steps for the next generation, learning from what, what went well for primary care, medical home, and what, what needs to be done to enhance that care, care delivery. Uh, so, in summary, I, I think we have to understand the environment we're in to be able to manage it and adjust it as we go along. Um, there's a lot of emerging capabilities that we can use, but they have to be used intentionally and they have to be used um, in the context of the broader uh, healthcare delivery effort. Um, redesign, I think infrastructure is something that really is, is needed in the healthcare industry. Uh, we need one infrastructure, we don't need silos. Just like, you know, 50 railroad uh, gauges across the country for in the 1800s didn't work and they needed to be kind of harmonized. So, and then identify waste and gain efficiencies. So thank you for your time.